According to Reuters, China is set to import record volumes of wheat this year, trading sources say, with rain damage to its crop and worries over dry weather in exporting nations fueling Beijing's appetite to buy while prices are low. Traders said China's frantic buying is likely to support global prices, which have dropped more than a quarter this year, based on the Chicago Futures benchmark price, amid abundant supplies from top exporter Russia. According to Reuters, the Bank of Japan modified further loosened its grip on long-term interest rates by tweaking its bond yield control policy on Tuesday, taking another step towards ending its massive stimulus program. At the conclusion of its two-day policy meeting, the BOJ maintained its minus 0.1% target for short-term interest rates and that for the 10-year government bond yield around 0% set under yield curve control. According to Bloomberg, China has taken a move that effectively allows insurance firms to make longer-term investments in shares, adding to a drumbeat of support measures to revitalize the country's stock market. The Ministry of Finance will from now on evaluate insurers' return on net assets based on a combination of a three-year cycle and a one-year time frame, instead of just the latter previously, it said in a notice released Monday. The ministry said the change is aimed at guiding long-term capital to play a stronger role of market stabilizer. According to Bloomberg, the Bank of Japan adjusted its stimulus to allow long-term yields to edge higher while raising its inflation projections, moves that signal it is likely inching closer toward policy normalization. The yen weakened against the dollar. The BOJ will take a more flexible approach to controlling yields on 10-year government debt, according to its statement Tuesday. That marks a shift from a previous pledge to conduct daily bond-buying operations at 1%, a stance that effectively drew a line in the sand at that level. According to Reuters, Chinese technology giant Alibaba said on Tuesday it has updated its artificial intelligence model Tongji Qianwen and released a suite of industry-specific AI models amid an intensifying AI race among tech companies. Alibaba's cloud computing arm at its annual conference in Hangzhou said Tongji Qianwen 2.0 has hundreds of billions of parameters, a benchmark used to measure AI model power, making it one of the world's most powerful AI models by that metric. According to Reuters, U.S. equity long, short hedge funds have cut to six-year lows the level at which swings in the SP500 affect their profits or losses, as portfolio managers are taking less directional bets, data from hedge fund research firm Pivotal Path showed. Hedge funds are increasingly adopting a more defensive strategy as concerns about the macroeconomic environment have made making directional bets on the stock market harder, Pivotal Path said. According to Bloomberg, Oil edged higher after falling the most in more than three weeks as the Israel-Hamas war remained contained and on indications demand may be softening. West Texas Intermediate rose toward $83, after retreating by nearly 4% on Monday to erase all of the gains that followed the October 7 attack on Israel. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu ruled out a ceasefire against Hamas, and so far the ground invasion of Gaza has yet to lead to a wider regional conflict that could endanger crude supplies. According to Bloomberg, the yen weakened after the Bank of Japan made only minor changes to its yield curve control settings, disappointing some in the market who had hoped for a further winding back of its accommodative monetary policy stance. Japan's currency slipped as much as 0.7% to 150.10 per dollar, while Japan's 10-year bond futures paired losses and stocks rose following the decision that also saw the central bank keeping its cap on long-term yields at 1%. Treasury yields fell. According to Bloomberg, South Korea's financial watchdog plans a wider probe into short-selling trades by global investment banks in the $1.6 trillion equity market, taking a hard-line stance to root out illegal practices. Banks that have conducted short-selling trades most frequently in Korea will be subject to the investigation that would start in November, the Financial Supervisory Service said in a Tuesday statement. The regulator said it will collaborate with watchdogs in Hong Kong and Singapore for its probe. According to Bloomberg, the yen extended declines against the dollar after the Bank of Japan added flexibility to its yield control program while falling short of market speculation of a greater change. The currency weakened 0.6% to 149.93 against the dollar as of 1.03 p.m. in Tokyo after the decision. Government debt futures narrowed losses while the 10-year sovereign yield remained at 0.93% where it was before the decision. 
According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average rebounded after the Bank of Japan added more flexibility to its yield curve control, but kept the policy in place. The stock benchmark was up 0.42% at 30,825.95 as of 0441 GMT after entering the midday recess down 0.15%. The BOJ announcement came just before markets reopened for afternoon trading. According to Bloomberg, Israel struck targets in Lebanon and stepped up its ground operations in Gaza as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu ruled out a ceasefire to halt fighting in response to a deadly attack on his country by Hamas on October 7. Concerns mounted over a humanitarian crisis in Gaza as trucks carrying aid trickle in. A top Israeli official said flows to Gaza are poised to increase with the U.S. looking to help in ways that prevent assistance from falling into the hands of Hamas which has been designated a terrorist group by Washington and European Union. According to Reuters, Asian equities slipped on Tuesday, hovering close to a near one-year low, as manufacturing activity data from China disappointed while the yen weakened past 150 per dollar after the Bank of Japan tweaked its bond yield control policy. The yen fell 0.7% against the dollar to touch a session low of 150.12 after the central bank maintained its target for the 10-year government bond yield around 0% set under its yield curve control but redefined 1.0% as a loose, upper bound, rather than a rigid cap. According to Bloomberg, global funds are offloading emerging Asia equities outside of China in droves as broader risk appetite cools amid concerns over a stronger dollar higher borrowing costs and geopolitical tensions. Foreign investors have dumped nearly $11 billion of shares in October, taking the three-month sell-off to about $27 billion, according to latest data compiled by Bloomberg. That's the longest bout of selling since last June when the Federal Reserve's tightening cycle and lockdowns in major Chinese cities were spooking investors. According to Reuters, Sunlight Financial, which provides financing for home solar systems, said late on Monday it has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and that it will be sold to a consortium of investors in the solar energy industry. The consortium, which includes an affiliate of Greenbacker Capital Management, Sunstone Credit, IGS Ventures, and its secured lender Cross River Bank, will invest significant new capital in Sunlight Financial to reduce its debt, the company said in a statement. According to Reuters, the yen waffled while the Nikkei index rose on Tuesday after the Bank of Japan said it was relaxing the bounds of its control on yields, which analysts took as the first step towards dismantling the long-running and controversial policy. At first glance, the BOJ's policy announcement seemed perfunctory and caused a knee-jerk decline in the yen. According to Reuters, Taiwanese chipmaker Powerchip Semiconductor Manufacturing Corp. and Japanese financial firm SBI Holdings said on Tuesday they have selected Miyagi Prefecture in northern Japan as the location for a $5.4 billion planned fab. Reuters reported this month that talks with the government regarding subsidies were progressing in what would become the latest commitment by Taiwanese chipmakers to manufacturing in Japan. According to Reuters, China's state-backed chip investment fund has invested 14.56 billion yuan in a memory chip company called Chongxin Xinchao, records showed. The deal saw China Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund, also known as the Big Fund, contribute to 33.15% of the total registered capital of Chongxin Xinchao, according to an update dated October 26 to the company's registration information on the National Enterprise Credit Information Publicity System. According to Bloomberg, China's recent stimulus boost stoked some optimism about the economy's recovery in the coming quarters, but economists are keeping their 2024 growth forecasts steady for now to assess how the measures will play out. The world's second-largest economy is projected to grow 4.5% next year, according to the median estimate in a Bloomberg survey of 48 economists conducted after last week's official announcement of the additional stimulus. The result was unchanged from an earlier poll. The number of respondents is smaller than the usual pool due to a shorter period for submissions. According to Bloomberg, the much-anticipated Bank of Japan liftoff didn't materialize on Tuesday but global bond traders got a taste of what's to come. The central bank adjusted its yield curve control to allow long-term yields to edge higher while raising inflation forecasts. Treasuries gained as the tweak was less than expected, offering relief for debt markets.
According to Bloomberg, China's appetite for gold will stay strong through the rest of 2023, the World Gold Council said, just as domestic prices for the safe haven soared to a record amid the strongest investment demand in more than two years. Demand for gold bars and coins in China rose 16% year-on-year in the third quarter and will remain robust in the final three months, the council said in its latest outlook. Economic and political uncertainties, currency volatility and central bank stockpiling have all fueled a buying binge. According to Reuters, Bitcoin, the original crypto rebel, is racing into the heart of the financial establishment with an exchange-traded fund that tracks its price. But will it strike gold? The world's biggest cryptocurrency has leapt 28% in October, with investors betting U.S. regulators will give the green light for a spot Bitcoin ETF and thereby unleash a new wave of demand. According to Reuters, Francis Thales on Tuesday posted a 7.5% underlying rise in nine-month revenues to 12.854 billion euros, led by resurgent demand for jetliner components and military equipment. Europe's largest defense electronics maker, which also provides civil aircraft systems and digital security equipment, said its order intake fell 18% from the same period last year, which had been buoyed by a Rafale fighter order from the United Arab Emirates. According to Reuters, Sri Lanka has invited bids for state-run carrier Sri Lankan Airlines as the island nation looks to reduce losses incurred by government-owned enterprises under a $2.9 billion international monetary fund program. The South Asian country secured a staff-level IMF agreement on the first review of its bailout recently but it still needs approval from the IMF's executive board. According to Bloomberg, Saudi Arabia's economy shrunk by 4.5% year-on-year in the third quarter, according to preliminary data, after the kingdom cut oil production to push up prices. It is the first contraction in Saudi Arabia's quarterly growth since the start of 2021. According to Reuters, Germany's Uniper, which was bailed out during Europe's energy crisis, swung to a nine-month net profit of 9.77 billion euro, boosted by falling gas prices that positively impacted future provisions. The result compares with a net loss of 40.3 billion euros in the same period last year, when ballooning costs for the replacement of Russian gas threw the company into its biggest crisis ever, triggering a government rescue. According to Reuters, Many of the world's biggest bond funds are facing their third straight year of losses for the first time in roughly 40 years, as a relentless U.S. economy sends bond yields to their highest levels in more than a decade. Yet far from being put off, investors are loading up on bonds again in 2023 after bailing out of the market last year, drawn in by the same run-up in yields that has caused so much pain. According to Reuters, the Russian ruble strengthened to a more than eight-week high against the dollar on Tuesday supported by high interest rates after Friday's rate increase and obligations for exporters to sell a high percentage of their foreign currency revenues. At 0654 GMT, the ruble was 0.7% stronger against the dollar at 92.20, its strongest point since August 2. According to Reuters, Stellantis said on Tuesday its sales rose 7% in the third quarter while the six-week strikes in the United States over salary increases had an overall negative impact on the group's revenue of around 3 billion euros. The U.S. strikes against the Detroit 3, which broke last month and are ending this week after tentative agreements, would cost Stellantis less than 750 million euros in terms of profitability, CFO Natalie Knight said in a media call, adding that was the smallest impact among the Detroit 3. According to Reuters, the world's largest brewer, Anheuser-Busch InBev, on Tuesday reported third-quarter sales growth that was slightly better than expected, as pricing boosted revenue and helped offset lower volumes of beer sold. AB InBev also announced a $1 billion share buyback and said it would offer to buy back bonds worth $3 billion, as it looks to further cut a debt pile built up over years of blockbuster acquisitions. According to Reuters, China's Alibaba is pressuring merchants to offer rock-bottom prices on its marketplaces in this year's Singles Day extravaganza, three industry sources said, as the e-commerce company seeks to boost sales and stem a drop in market share. The sources, who help dozens of brands operate their stores on Alibaba's platforms, said they were told to offer the best price of the year on Tmall or Taobao for the blockbuster shopping event, or risk losing the traffic and support given to event participants.
According to Reuters, debt-burdened retailer casino said on Tuesday group sales fell 5.3% in the third quarter, as weakness in its core French market outpaced robust growth in Brazil. Consolidated group net sales fell 5.3% on a same-store basis in the third quarter to 4.562 billion euros, the retailer said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, French output grew slightly in the third quarter, providing some support to the euro area as it grapples with higher interest rates and prolonged manufacturing weakness. Gross domestic product in the bloc's second-largest economy rose 0.1% in the three months through September, data Tuesday showed. That's down from a revised 0.6% in the previous quarter and is in line with expectations. According to Reuters, Britain's Vodafone will sell its Spanish business for €5 billion Euros to Zigona Communications, the company said on Tuesday. Vodafone's chief executive Margarita de la Valle said the sale would enable it to focus its resources in markets with sustainable structures and sufficient local scale. According to Reuters, Spain's BBVA on Tuesday posted a 13% rise in third-quarter net profit rose 13% buoyed by higher lending income in its main markets, Spain and Mexico. The third biggest eurozone lender by market value booked a net profit of 2.08 billion euros for the July to September period. According to Bloomberg, Samsung Electronics Company beat profit expectations in the third quarter and predicted a recovery in the semiconductor market next year. The world's largest maker of memory chips and smartphones said on Tuesday that net income fell 40% to 5.5 trillion won in the September quarter, compared with analyst estimates of 2.52 trillion won, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. That's an improvement from the 86% decline a quarter earlier. According to Reuters, China's short-term money rates spiked on Tuesday, the last trading day of the month, driven up by higher seasonal demand for cash, while markets continue to expect the central bank to inject more liquidity in coming months to shore up a fragile economic recovery. The benchmark overnight repo traded in the interbank market jumped as much as 255 basis points to 4% in morning deals, the loftiest level since February 28. It last traded at 1.8658% on Tuesday afternoon. According to Reuters, Siemens and Microsoft on Tuesday announced a joint project to use artificial intelligence to increase productivity and human-machine collaboration. The Siemens Industrial Copilot scheme will see the two companies work together to use generative AI for the manufacturing, transportation and healthcare industries. According to Bloomberg, BPPLC's third quarter profit rebounded from the prior period, but fell short of estimates as weak results in gas marketing offset a strong performance in oil trading. Like its big oil peers, BP's earnings were well below last year's record levels yet high by historical standards as geopolitical tensions keep energy prices elevated. The huge cash inflows have stimulated a spate of dealmaking, with Exxon Mobil Corp. and Chevron Corp. announcing a pair of acquisitions totaling more than $100 billion over the past month, widening their lead over Europe's majors. According to Bloomberg, Zigona Communications PLC has agreed to buy Vodafone Group PLC's Spanish business for 5 billion euros including debt. To finance the deal, Zigona has raised debt financing of 4.2 billion euros and a committed revolving credit facility of 500 million euros, the company said in a statement on Tuesday. Vodafone will provide as much as 900 million euros financing through an investment vehicle which will buy new shares of Zigona. According to Bloomberg, the Bank of Japan is bringing an end to its near monopoly of control over the nation's bond market. Japan's central bank has tightly overseen the government debt market since it introduced yield curve control in September 2016, with its ownership of outstanding bonds surpassing 50%. But with the authority now suggesting it's ready to let the benchmark 10-year yield rise beyond 1%, investors look set to take back the helm. According to Reuters, British online trading platform IG Group on Tuesday said it would cut 10% of its headcount as part of cost-saving measures to drive operating margin expansion and become a leaner fintech firm. The group said it expects to reduce about 300 roles worldwide by the end of fiscal 2023, adding that the overall efficiency measures are expected to deliver full run rate cost savings of £50 million per year.
According to Reuters, the chief executives of Air India and Akasa Air have privately exchanged barbs over the poaching of pilots, with the latter accusing its bigger rival of rule violations, provoking a reply that collusion to curb job switching can breach competition law. The exchange, detailed in a September 21 letter seen by Reuters, spotlights growing competition in India's aviation market, as a strong rebound in air travel after the pandemic, coupled with a flurry of orders for new aircraft, lead to a shortage of pilots. According to Reuters, Malaysian bank SIM and Japanese finance company J Trust are among firms vying to buy Indonesia's PT Bank Commonwealth, a deal that could value the lender at $400 to $500 million, two sources with knowledge of the matter said. Bank Commonwealth, which is 99% owned by Australia's biggest lender Commonwealth Bank of Australia, focuses on retail lending as well as corporate banking services for small and medium enterprises. According to Reuters, Anna Holdings said on Tuesday its first-half operating profit had more than quadrupled amid the post-pandemic travel boom but kept its full-year forecast unchanged citing higher oil prices and costs related to inspections of Pratt Whitney engines. Japan's largest airline plans to cut about 30 domestic and international flights a day between January 10 and March 30 as it conducts inspections of PW's engines installed on its 33 Airbus fleet. According to Bloomberg, Sarepta Therapeutics Inc. said a trial of its gene therapy for Duchenne muscular dystrophy didn't meet its main goal in a trial, a setback for the company as it seeks to widen approval for the treatment to an older group. While patients in the trial improved in an ambulatory assessment, the change wasn't great enough to hit its primary endpoint, Sarepta said Monday in a statement. Still, the results of the trial showed the treatment worked in some measures and that Elevides modifies the trajectory of the disease across age groups, the company said. According to Reuters, the Russian ruble climbed to a three-month high past 92 to the dollar on Tuesday, supported by high interest rates after Friday's rate increase and obligations for exporters to sell a high percentage of their foreign currency revenues. By 0810 GMT, the ruble was 1% stronger against the dollar at 91.91, its strongest point since August 1. According to Reuters, BP remains committed to its offshore wind growth plans after the energy company booked a $540 million impairment on two U.S. projects, CEO Murray Auchincloss told Reuters on Tuesday. BP and its partner Equinor are assessing their next steps after the state of New York rejected the company's request to revise upwards power supply contracts for the giant projects, Auchincloss said. According to Bloomberg, European stocks were subdued on Tuesday heading for their biggest drop for the month of October since 2020, as investors mulled mixed earnings reports ahead of the Federal Reserve's policy decision this week. The stock's Europe 600 was up 0.1% at 8.12 a.m. in London, with the food and beverage sector and chemicals stocks gaining while energy shares lagged. According to Reuters, Toyota Motor is expected to report a surge in third-quarter profit on Wednesday and lift its full-year outlook as the Japanese automaker benefits from both robust demand and a weaker yen currency. Even as worries about the global economic outlook deepen, the world's top-selling car manufacturer has been little phased so far. Toyota sold 7.5 million cars including of its Lexus brand in the first nine months of the year, it said this week, an increase of almost 7% over the same period last year. According to Bloomberg, Siemens Energy AG is considering selling a substantial part of its 24% stake in a listed Indian affiliate to former parent Siemens AG as part of efforts to shore up its balance sheet, according to people familiar with the matter. The German turbine maker may announce the divestment of shares in Mumbai-listed Siemens Limited as early as this week, some of the people said, asking not to be identified because the information is private. The entire holding is worth about 3.3 billion euros based on Monday's closing price, equivalent to around half of Siemens Energy's market value. According to Reuters, Western embassies and the United Nations are urging Pakistan to incorporate into its plan to deport hundreds of thousands of undocumented migrants a way to identify and protect Afghans who face the risk of persecution at home, officials told Reuters. Pakistan has set November 1 for the start of the expulsions, which could leave more than 1.7 million Afghans vulnerable in the South Asian nation, from a total of 4 million migrants and refugees from its neighbor. According to Reuters, 
French construction to telecoms conglomerate Bouygues beat nine-month core profit and sales expectations on Tuesday, driven mainly by its energy arm Equans. The results sent shares in Bouygues up 5.8% by 0.848 GMT. According to Reuters, the Biden administration on Tuesday will seek to impose new rules on retirement plan providers to close loopholes that officials argue allow the industry to sell products that boost their revenue at the expense of customers, the latest effort by the administration to crack down on so-called junk fees. The proposed Labor Department rules require retirement plan providers to only sell commodities and insurance products, such as annuities, to clients when doing so is in the customer's best interest. According to Reuters, 40 countries in a U.S.-led alliance plan to sign a pledge never to pay ransom to cybercriminals and to work toward eliminating the hacker's funding mechanism, a senior White House official said on Tuesday. The International Counter-Ransomware Initiative comes as the number of ransomware attacks grows worldwide. The United States is by far the worst hit, with 46% of such attacks, Ann Neuberger, U.S. Deputy National Security Advisor in the Biden Administration for Cyber and Emerging Technologies, told reporters on a virtual briefing. According to Bloomberg, Italy's economy stagnated in the third quarter, just dodging a recession as Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney battles to keep output expanding while also limiting debt. Gross domestic product was unchanged from the previous three months, data Tuesday showed. That follows a 0.4% contraction in the second quarter and is less than the 0.1% growth estimated by analysts in a Bloomberg poll. According to Bloomberg, BPPLC doesn't need to do big deals to expand its U.S. operations after competitors Exxon Mobil Corp. and Chevron Corp. agreed a pair of takeovers worth more than $100 billion, said Interim Chief Executive Officer Murray Auchincloss. We have lots of barrels in the United States, we do not need to buy them, Auchincloss said in an interview with Bloomberg on Tuesday. We'd much rather be counter-cyclical than buy at a high point in the market. According to Bloomberg, just a few years ago, Glen Point Capital co-founder Neil Phillips was celebrated as an aggressive but canny trader in the mold of one of his macro hedge fund's main investors, George Soros. As of last week, Phillips is a convicted felon. According to Bloomberg, KKR Company is raising a second Asia real estate fund, targeting $2 billion to $2.5 billion to spend across the region, according to people familiar with the matter. The new fund has amassed about $600 million since late 2022, and the U.S. investment firm is seeking to finish fundraising by the end of 2024 to early 2025, said the people, who asked not to be identified as the matter as private. According to Reuters, the Norwegian Defense Ministry on Tuesday said it had agreed a new collaboration with U.S.-based RTX unit Raytheon and Norway's Kongsberg Gruppen on further development of the NASAM's surface-to-air missile system. We need to strengthen and further expand air defense to better protect civilian and military targets against airborne threats, Norwegian Defense Minister Bjorn Arild Graham said in a statement. According to Yahoo Finance, a Federal Reserve meeting Apple earnings and a monthly jobs report are all on tap this week, but a different announcement coming from the U.S. Treasury caught investor attention on Monday. The announcement in question is a quarterly refunding update set for Wednesday where investors will learn how much bond supply the U.S. government will put into the market next quarter. The fact investors are even interested in the minutiae of the bond market reflects a stark shift in how investors are tracking what could move markets as 2023 comes to a close. According to Bloomberg, central banks have loaded up on more gold than previously thought this year, offering crucial support to prices that have faced pressure from global monetary tightening. Countries expanded bullion reserves by 337 tons in the three months through September, the World Gold Council said in a report Tuesday. That follows an increase of 175 tons in the second quarter, which was bigger than the council's previous estimate of 103 tons. According to Reuters, Carlsberg has cut all ties with its Russian business and refuses to enter a deal with Russia's government that would make its seizure of the assets look legitimate, the brewer's new CEO said on Tuesday. The Danish group had since last year attempted to sell its Baltica subsidiary in Russia, following in the footsteps of many other Western companies exiting Russia since its invasion of Ukraine. According to Reuters, Berkshire Hathaway, the investment company owned by Warren Buffett, 
has sold 820,500 Hong Kong listed shares of electric vehicle maker BYD County for 201.73 million Hong Kong dollars, a stock exchange filing showed. The sale on October 25 lowered Berkshire's holdings in BYD's issued H shares to 7.98% from 8.05%, the filing to the Hong Kong Stock Exchange on Tuesday showed. According to Reuters, Eurozone yields fell on Tuesday as country inflation data pointed to a lower print for the currency block overall later in the day, helped too by a late rally in Treasuries a day earlier as the U.S. cut near-term government borrowing forecasts. Also in the mix was the Bank of Japan's decision to loosen its grip on long-term interest rates by tweaking its bond yield control policy, another small step towards dismantling its aggressive monetary stimulus of the past decade. According to Reuters, Britain will host the world's first global artificial intelligence safety summit this week to examine the risks of the fast-growing technology and kickstart an international dialogue on regulation of it. It will take place at Bletchley Park, where Britain's World War II codebreakers worked, in southern England on November 1-2. According to Reuters, risk sentiment took a dive on Tuesday with stocks hovering near 11-month lows after data showed China manufacturing activity stumbled in October, while currencies traded tepidly ahead of a U.S. interest rate decision later in the week. Mischi's gauge for emerging markets equities slid 0.6%, pressured by heavyweight China and Hong Kong stocks, which closed down 0.3% and 1.7% respectively. According to Reuters, Russian President Vladimir Putin and top government and security officials on Monday discussed strengthening measures to counter external interference, including information-related interference, the Kremlin's spokesman said on Tuesday. In a statement to a meeting of members of his Security Council and the government and the heads of law enforcement agencies, Putin had on Monday accused the West and Ukraine of stirring up unrest inside Russia after rioters in the predominantly Muslim Dagestan region stormed an airport to catch Jewish passengers on a flight from Tel Aviv. According to Reuters, U.S. stock index futures were mixed on Tuesday in the run-up to the Federal Reserve's policy meeting that will shape expectations for its interest rate path, while investors also awaited a fresh batch of earnings reports. Wall Street's main indexes rallied over 1% in the previous session, rebounding from a sell-off in the past few weeks that was sparked by surging Treasury yields and the Israel-Hamas conflict. According to Reuters, the Republican and Democratic leaders of a U.S. Congressional Committee on China urged Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen to urgently implement outbound investment restrictions on the country, warning that Beijing was using American capital to develop technologies as her department debated new rules. U.S. President Joe Biden in August issued an executive order authorizing the Treasury Secretary to prohibit or restrict U.S. investments in Chinese entities in three sectors, semiconductors and microelectronics, quantum information technologies and certain artificial intelligence systems. According to Reuters, Japan's government confirmed on Tuesday that it did not intervene in the currency market to prop up the yen in the past month, data from the Ministry of Finance showed. The monthly Ministry of Finance data showed no spending on intervention between September 28 and October 27. According to Reuters, the eventual end of the Federal Reserve's efforts to reduce its vast bond holdings increasingly appears tied to what happens with the central bank's reverse repo operations. That's because the facility, which allows eligible banks and investment firms to park cash at the Fed and earn interest, is the largest source of easily extinguished liquidity as the Fed seeks to withdraw its pandemic-era stimulus. According to Reuters, Eurozone economic growth was weaker than expected in the third quarter, a flash estimate showed on Tuesday, with gross domestic product contracting slightly quarter-on-quarter quarter in the year-on-year -year growth rate slowing sharply. The European Union's statistics office Eurostat said GDP in the 20 countries sharing the euro fell 0.1% quarter-on-quarter in the July to September period for a 0.1% year-on-year rise. According to Reuters, the U.S. Department of Justice heads to trial on Tuesday to urge a federal judge to block JetBlue Airways' planned $3.8 billion acquisition of ultra-low-cost carrier Spirit Airlines. The case in federal court in Boston is part of a broad effort by President Joe Biden's administration to preserve competition among the lowest-cost airlines, ensuring air travel remains affordable for many more U.S. consumers. According to Reuters, 
Eurozone inflation dropped to its lowest level in over two years in October, as energy prices fell and the high interest rates set by the European Central Bank dampened demand, a preliminary reading showed on Tuesday. The data seems likely to cement the market's view that the ECB is done with raising rates as part of its fight against high inflation, which had been supported by more expensive fuel, supply disruptions and a recovery in demand following the COVID-19 pandemic. According to Reuters, European shares climbed on Tuesday, led by real estate and chemical stocks, with investors drawing comfort from a slew of corporate earnings beat, while focusing on major economic data releases throughout the day. According to Reuters, Hong Kong's economic growth accelerated in the third quarter to 4.1% from a year earlier, official advance estimates showed on Tuesday, as inbound tourism and private consumption supported a revival. The reading missed a median forecast of 5.2% in a Reuters poll of 13 economists, but beat the 1.5% expansion of the second quarter in the 2.9% of the first. According to Reuters, China Evergrande is trying to stave off liquidation by revising its debt restructuring plan, but its biggest challenge will be convincing its creditors and shareholders in two of its units that the proposal is worth their while. A Hong Kong court on Monday gave Evergrande, the world's most indebted property developer, a five-week reprieve to come up with a deal. The company, which has more than $300 billion of liabilities, defaulted on its offshore debt in late 2021 and became the poster child of a debt crisis that has since engulfed China's property sector. According to Reuters, Russia is imposing effective capital controls on Western companies selling their operations in Russia with caps and deadlines on foreign currency transactions, the Financial Times reported on Tuesday, citing people familiar with the matter. Reuters could not immediately verify the report. In August, Reuters exclusively reported that some companies trying to exit Russia were facing big jumps in costs as Moscow demanded ever larger discounts on price tags of assets they were seeking to sell. Russia has steadily tightened exit requirements since Western companies started leaving soon after Moscow invaded Ukraine in February 2022. According to Reuters, Blackstone and Vista Equity Partners have agreed to acquire Australia's Energy Exemplar, a provider of energy market software for more than $1 billion, according to people familiar with the matter. The deal represents a bet on energy transition, as power utilities, grid operators and renewable energy developers turn to simulation software to fine-tune use of production capacity and maximize efficiencies. According to Bloomberg, euro-area inflation eased to its lowest level in more than two years as the bloc's economy shrank following an unprecedented ramp-up in interest rates. Consumer prices rose 2.9% in October, down from the previous month's 4.3% and better than the 3.1% median estimate in a Bloomberg survey analysts. In a separate release, Eurostat said third-quarter gross domestic product fell 0.1%, missing estimates for stagnation. According to Reuters, one of the last anchors for global bond markets was being hauled in on Tuesday as the Bank of Japan announced a new degree of tolerance for rising government bond yields and signaled an end to its seven-year straitjacket on long-term rates. A 1% cap on the 10-year Japanese government yield became a reference, and the central bank watered down language about the effort and cash it would expend to keep the rate under control. According to Reuters, China on Tuesday set out plans to develop a free trade zone in its northwestern Xinjiang region rooting it in President Xi Jinping's ambitious Belt and Road Initiative to connect the country to Europe through economic corridors. Rights groups accuse Beijing of abuses against Uyghurs, a mainly Muslim ethnic minority that numbers around 10 million in Xinjiang, including the mass use of forced labor in internment camps. China denies any rights abuses. According to Bloomberg, Caterpillar Inc. earnings were buoyed by higher prices and strong sales in the third quarter helping the machinery maker sidestep concerns of a global economic slowdown with profit that beat analysts' expectations. The company known for its iconic yellow bulldozers reported adjusted earnings of $5.52 a share, beating the $4.77 average estimate of 23 analysts polled by Bloomberg. Caterpillar posted better-than-expected revenue in its construction equipment business, while sales from mining as well as its energy and transportation businesses were weaker than analysts anticipated. According to Reuters, 
Indian opposition leader Rahul Gandhi on Tuesday accused Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government of trying to hack into senior opposition politicians' mobile phones, after they reported receiving warning messages from Apple. Some of the lawmakers shared screenshots on social media of a notification quoting the iPhone manufacturer as saying, Apple believes you are being targeted by state-sponsored attackers who are trying to remotely compromise the iPhone associated with your Apple ID. According to Reuters, Pfizer on Tuesday reported its first quarterly loss since 2019, as the U.S. drugmaker recorded $5.6 billion in charges related to its COVID products like its antiviral treatment Paxlovid and vaccine Comirnaty. The company posted a loss of $0.42 cents per share for the third quarter. It had reported a profit of $1.51 per share in the year-ago quarter. According to Reuters, French utility EDF, South Korea's KHNP and U.S. group Westinghouse Electric have submitted final bids in a tender run by Czech electricity producer CEZ to build a new nuclear power unit at its Dukovani plant, CEZ said on Tuesday. CEZ, which is 70% owned by the Czech state, invited bids from the companies for the multi-billion dollar project earlier this year. According to Reuters, futures for Wall Street's main stock indexes rose on Tuesday in the run-up to the Federal Reserve's policy meeting that will shape expectations for its interest rate path, while investors eyed more earnings to gauge how corporate America is faring. Wall Street's main indexes rallied more than 1% in the previous session, rebounding from a sell-off in the past few weeks that was sparked by surging Treasury yields in the Middle East conflict. According to Reuters, Amgen, which earlier this month acquired Horizon Therapeutics for $27.8 billion, on Tuesday said its third-quarter product sales rose 5% as double-digit volume growth was offset by lower prices. Amgen said it would discuss sales of Horizon's drugs on a conference call with analysts and investors, but raised its post-acquisition forecast for full-year sales to between $28 billion and $28.4 billion from a previous estimate of $26.6 billion to $27.4 billion. According to Reuters, futures for Canada's main stock index moved upwards on Tuesday as a rise in prices of gold and oil is expected to boost the commodity heavy index, while investors awaited domestic GDP figures for August, due later in the day. December futures on the SPTSX index were up 0.4% at 7.01 a.m. Eastern Time. According to Reuters, New Zealand captain Tom Latham expects fast bowler Lockie Ferguson to be available for Wednesday's World Cup clash with South Africa but Kane Williamson and Mark Chapman remain doubtful for the match in Pune. Latham, who took over the captaincy when Williamson fractured his thumb during a match against Bangladesh this month, told reporters on Tuesday that the injured player's progress was being monitored on a day-to-day -day basis. According to Reuters, Biotechni missed Wall Street expectations for first-quarter profit on Tuesday, as a persisting funding crunch among its biotech clients weighed on demand for its diagnostic products and compounds used in developing drugs. Since the start of the year, higher interest rates have squeezed funding for drug development and research programs among smaller biotechs, especially in China. According to Reuters, midstream energy company MPLX transported 2% more products including natural gas and crude oil in the third quarter of 2023 versus the same time the year prior, and reported higher earnings on Tuesday. Total pipeline throughputs were 5.9 million barrels per day in the third quarter, while the average pipeline tariff rate was 99 cents per barrel for the quarter, an increase of 13% versus the same quarter of 2022, the company said in an earnings release. According to Reuters, energy infrastructure company Enterprise Products Partners said on Tuesday it is developing four new projects in the Permian Basin, the largest U.S. oil patch. Permian is a prime target for producers looking to increase their inventory. The shale patch, which lies between Texas and New Mexico, has the necessary infrastructure and is known for high productivity and large undeveloped reserves. According to Yahoo Finance, weight loss and diabetes drugs, a potential $100 billion industry, have captured Wall Street's imagination. As celebrities and influencers touted the drug's efficacy, Goldman Sachs projected that these drugs could serve as many as 15 million people by 2030. Predictions of their impact on America's biggest companies have been rolling in, from airline fuel savings and new wardrobes to changes in eating behaviors and health needs. 
According to Reuters, inflation in the eurozone hit a two-year low a month after its economy began contracting, data showed on Tuesday, illustrating the dual impact of a steady diet of European Central Bank's interest rate hikes. Prices rose by just 2.9% in October, their slowest pace since July 2021, a Eurostat flash reading showed, a time when the ECB was still worried about inflation getting stuck below its 2% target. According to Reuters, China will step up financial supervision to prevent and resolve financial risks, state media reported, citing a key twice-a-decade financial policy meeting that ended on Tuesday. China will uphold the centralized and unified leadership of the party on financial work, the National Financial Work Conference was quoted as saying. According to Bloomberg, WeWork Inc. entered into a seven-day forbearance agreement with its bondholders after a grace period to pay interest on several of its bonds expired, according to a regulatory filing. At the beginning of October, the co-working firm withheld $37.3 million of cash and $57.9 million of in-kind payments on its debt, kicking off a 30-day grace period before a default. It said at the time that it had enough liquidity to make the payments and that it might elect to do so in the coming weeks. According to Reuters, the British pound was strengthening against a weaker dollar on Tuesday but still on track for its third straight monthly drop as traders looked ahead to the Bank of England's policy announcement on Thursday. Britain's central bank is expected to keep interest rates unchanged at a 15-year high of 5.25% when it announces policy this week, amid signs that the labour market is cooling even as it faces an inflation rate more than three times as high as its target. According to Reuters, Eaton Corp raised its full-year adjusted profit forecast on Tuesday and beat estimates for quarterly profit on robust demand for its electrical components and equipments. Strengthening non-residential construction market in the U.S. along with increased investments in electric vehicles and new battery plants has boosted demand for Eaton's products including transformers, regulators and electrical switchgears. According to Yahoo Finance, U.S. stock futures ticked higher on Tuesday eyeing a return to the previous day's rally as Treasury yields fell and investors braced for the Federal Reserve's upcoming policy decision. Futures on the SP500 rose about 0.2%, on track to extend Monday's gain of 1.2%, while Dow Jones Industrial Average futures were up around 0.2%, as well. Contracts on the tech-heavy Nasdaq 100 hovered just above the flatline. According to Reuters, Debt-laden WeWork said on Tuesday it has decided to withhold interest payment of about $6.4 million on some of its notes as the flexible workspace provider looks to improve its balance sheet. The company has been in turmoil ever since its plans to go public in 2019 imploded as investors worried over its hefty losses and began to doubt its business model of taking long-term leases and renting them for the short term. According to Reuters, European shares rose on Tuesday while the Japanese yen slid to near a one-year low against the dollar after the Bank of Japan's moves towards ending years of massive monetary stimulus underwhelmed some investors. European shares climbed 0.7% as investors drew comfort from resilient corporate earnings, providing some relief after Asian equities earlier lost ground on renewed fears over the prospects for the Chinese economy following weak manufacturing data. According to Yahoo Finance, AMD is looking for a power-up as it reports third-quarter earnings Tuesday after the bell. Amid the AI boom, the chipmaker is playing catch-up with NVIDIA, which currently rules the roost in AI chips. Recently, AMD CEO Dr. Lisa Su made the case that the field in AI is more wide open than it might appear right now, an idea AMD seems to be betting on. According to Reuters, Hong Kong's Financial Secretary Paul Chan will attend an APEC meeting on November 15-17 in San Francisco, it said on Tuesday, standing in for Chief Executive John Lee and smoothing over a diplomatically sensitive issue for both Beijing and Washington. Chan's acceptance of the invitation suggests an agreement by the Chinese-ruled city to be represented at the meeting by an official other than its chief executive. Beijing had previously said Lee, who is subject to U.S. sanctions, should attend. According to Reuters, China's most popular social media platforms on Tuesday announced that, self-media, accounts with more than 500,000 followers will be asked to display real name information, a controversial measure that has prompted concerns over doxing and privacy among some users.
Self-media, includes news and information not necessarily approved by the government, a genre of online content regulators have cracked down on in recent years to purify China's cyberspace. According to Reuters, the Canadian economy flatlined in August, underperforming expectations, and it likely contracted slightly in the third quarter, Statistics Canada data showed on Tuesday. Analysts polled by Reuters had forecast a 0.1% month-over-month rise in August. July GDP was revised to being marginally negative from an initial report of zero growth. According to Reuters, Brazil's jobless rate fell for the sixth rolling quarter in a row in the three months through September, statistics agency IBGE said on Tuesday, as President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva predicted more jobs would be created by the end of the year. In Latin America's largest economy, the unemployment rate reached 7.7% in the period, in line with market expectations in a Reuters poll and down from the 7.8% seen in the quarter ended in August. According to Reuters, two of President Joe Biden's top advisors will try to convince U.S. lawmakers on Tuesday that it is in the country's best interest to provide billions more dollars to Ukraine and Israel despite huge budget deficits and divisions over his administration's policies toward both countries. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin will testify to the Senate Appropriations Committee on Biden's request for $106 billion to fund ambitious plans for Ukraine, Israel and U.S. border security. According to Reuters, barcode scanner maker Zebra Technologies Corp. beat third-quarter profit and revenue estimates on Tuesday but forecast a bigger-than-expected drop in the fourth-quarter net sales due to slowing tech spending in a tough economy. The company, which counts U.S. Postal Service and Walgreens Boots Alliance as its customers, has previously said it expects a hit from poor demand and growing inventory levels at its clients, primarily in the retail, e-commerce and logistics sectors. According to Reuters, GSK will pay about $1 billion for exclusive rights to further develop and commercialize Johnson Johnson's hepatitis B therapy, the British drugmaker said on Tuesday. Jange 3989 was initially developed by Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals and licensed to Johnson Johnson owned Janssen in 2018. According to Reuters, nine-month revenues for Italian fashion group Prada rose 17% at constant exchange rates as a strong performance in Asia and Europe helped to compensate for weakness in the Americas, the company said on Tuesday. Net revenues totaled 3.34 billion euros in the first nine months of the year, with the ready-to-wear category showing the fastest growth. According to Reuters, India's Tata Consumer Products reported quarterly earnings above market expectations on Tuesday, as the salt maker's margins got a boost from price increases it had implemented to counter rising raw material costs. Global consumer goods companies have raised prices of everything from noodles to salt over the last year to protect their earnings margins even as they face a potential impact on demand from inflation-stung consumers. According to Reuters, Amatech, which makes electronic instruments, raised its full-year forecast on Tuesday and announced its fifth and sixth acquisitions for 2023 as it expands into different markets and drives earnings growth. Amatech, whose instruments and equipment are used in industries ranging from aerospace to food packaging, said it would buy medical components maker Paragon Medical in a $1.9 billion deal and amplifier research for an undisclosed amount. According to Reuters, Vodafone's bid on Tuesday to sell its Spanish business is the latest move by European telecom firms trying to strengthen their financial health by divesting assets, consolidating markets and selling stakes to investors. Buried under billions of euros of debt, European telecom companies operate in small, highly competitive markets, unlike their peers in other regions, making it difficult for them to find growth. According to Reuters, Wall Street's main indexes were set for a higher open on Tuesday as Treasury yields fell in the run-up to the Federal Reserve's monetary policy meeting, while investors assessed the latest batch of earnings reports. The three main indexes rallied more than 1% in the previous session, rebounding from a sell-off in the past few weeks that was sparked by surging Treasury yields in the Middle East conflict. According to Yahoo Finance, one day after the Biden administration rolled out a sweeping new executive order on artificial intelligence, the White House is convening leaders from around the world to confront what it considers another pressing issue, ransomware. The third international counter-ransomware summit kicks off Tuesday, 
with representatives from about 50 countries in attendance. Biden officials hope to use the event to finalize a wave of new efforts designed to counteract the ransomware ecosystem. According to Reuters, U.S. labor costs increased solidly in the third quarter amid strong wage growth, the latest indication that the Federal Reserve could keep interest rates higher for some time. The Employment Cost Index, the broadest measure of labor costs, rose 1.1% last quarter after increasing 1.0% in the April to June period, the Labor Department said on Tuesday. According to Bloomberg, the Canadian economy appears to have entered a technical recession, with a minor contraction estimated in the third quarter, reinforcing the case for an end to interest rate hikes. Preliminary data suggest gross domestic product was unchanged in September, Statistics Canada reported Tuesday. The three straight months of flat output since July point to a decline of 0.1% annualized for the quarter, following a decrease of 0.2% over the period from April to June. According to Reuters, Overnight borrowing costs for some Chinese financial institutions jumped to as high as 50% on Tuesday, as a month-end scramble for cash squeezed liquidity and stressed money markets. In addition to seasonal factors, the cash shortage was caused by an upcoming flood of government bond issuance, and traders also pointed to market fears of default by cash-strapped institutions. According to Reuters, Shipping agent Cargonave said on Tuesday berth 201 on the west corridor of Brazil's port of Paranagua would resume normal operations on Thursday, according to a note to clients based on information it said it received from the local port authority. The port authority did not have an immediate comment on Cargonave's note to clients. According to Reuters, U.S. annual home price growth accelerated for a third straight month in August, underscoring the recovery of the housing market after a period of softening data showed on Tuesday. Home prices rose 5.6% on a year-over-year -year basis in August, up from a 4.6% increase in the prior month, the Federal Housing Finance Agency said. According to Reuters, Canadian miner First Quantum Minerals on Tuesday responded to opposition to Law 406, which approves the refreshed mining concession contract for the company's Cobra Panama mine. The company said, unconstitutionality challenges have been brought against Law 406, and currently two of them have been admitted to be heard by the Supreme Court of Justice in the country. According to Bloomberg, U.S. employment costs unexpectedly accelerated in the third quarter, heightening concerns that a strong labor market risks keeping inflation above the Federal Reserve's target. The Employment Cost Index, a broad gauge of wages and benefits, increased 1.1% in the July to September period after rising 1% in the second quarter, according to Bureau of Labor Statistics figures released Tuesday. While wage growth picked up slightly within private industry, salaries at state and local governments surged. According to Yahoo Finance, home prices finished the summer at another record high as home affordability tanks to a historical low. The SP CoreLogic Case Schiller National Home Price Index increased 0.9% in August month over month and 2.6% annually on a seasonally adjusted basis. The index has risen for seven consecutive months and hit an all time index high in August. According to Bloomberg, home prices in the U.S. reached a new high in August after seven straight months of gains. A national gauge of prices increased 0.9% in August from July according to seasonally adjusted data from SP CoreLogic Case Schiller. Cities reaching all-time highs include New York, Boston, Miami and Atlanta. According to Yahoo Finance, AB InBev may still be recovering from its hangover, but shares of the Bud Light parent are up in pre-market trading after announcing a $1 billion buyback program. The buyback will be executed over the next 12 months. According to Reuters, British police said on Tuesday a man walked into a McDonald's restaurant in central England and dumped dozens of live rodents dyed in the colors of the Palestinian flag on the floor, and the incident was under investigation. Britain has seen increasing incidents of anti-Semitism since Israel launched a heavy bombardment of Gaza followed by a ground offensive in response to a Palestinian Hamas attack on Israel on October 7. There have been reports of assaults, verbal abuse and damage to property in Britain, as elsewhere around the world. According to Reuters, U.S. labor costs increased solidly in the third quarter amid strong wage growth, 
the latest indication that the Federal Reserve could keep interest rates high for some time. The rise in compensation reported on Tuesday by the Labor Department was slightly stronger than expected and helps to explain the surge in consumer spending last quarter, which contributed to the fastest economic growth pace in nearly two years. According to Reuters, U.S. consumer confidence declined for a third straight month in October amid persistent worries about inflation, higher borrowing costs and the political environment, a survey showed on Tuesday. The conference board said its consumer confidence index fell to 102.6 this month from an upwardly revised 104.3 in September. Economists polled by Reuters had forecast the index slipping to 100.0 from the previously reported 103.0. According to Reuters, Sirius XM met quarterly profit expectations on Tuesday, as a surprise rise in paid promotional users and its focus on cost savings offset the impact from a loss in self-paying subscribers. Shares of Sirius XM, the only satellite radio company in the United States, were up 4% in early trading. According to Reuters, Chile's LATAM Airlines' fourth quarter bookings are looking, in a strong position, in almost every segment so far executives at the company said in an earnings call on Tuesday following the publication of a healthy set of third-quarter financial results. The company. According to Reuters, in Los Angeles, a man screaming, kill Jews, attempts to break into a family's home. In London, girls in a playground are told they are, stinking Jews, and should stay off the slide. In China, Posts likening Jews to parasites, vampires or snakes proliferate on social media, attracting thousands of likes. These are examples of incidents of anti-Semitism, which have surged globally since the attack by Hamas gunmen on southern Israel on October 7 and subsequent war on the Islamist group launched by Israel in the Gaza Strip. According to Reuters, the Russian ruble weakened on Tuesday pulling back after soaring to a three-month high past 92 to the dollar earlier in a volatile session, supported by high interest rates, but facing a month-end reduction in foreign currency sales. By 1324 GMT, the ruble was 0.5% weaker against the dollar at 93.28. It had earlier strengthened to 91.6225, its strongest point since August 1. According to Reuters, Federal Reserve policymakers have telegraphed no change to the current 5.25% minus 5.50% target range for short-term interest rates at their two-day meeting starting Tuesday. But they will have a robust debate about the U.S. outlook and what policy response might be required at upcoming meetings, given recent data that includes both surprisingly strong growth in jobs and the economy and a rise in longer-term borrowing costs expected to slow both down. According to Reuters, Shares in Canadian miner First Quantum Minerals fell 17% on Tuesday, adding to the previous day's steep fall, as the uncertainty over the future of its key Panama copper mine encouraged investors to cut their exposure. President Laurentino Cortizo said on Sunday Panama would hold a referendum to decide whether to scrap a contract with First Quantum's local unit following days of protests by thousands of people opposed to the open pit copper mine project. According to Yahoo Finance, Disney accused Florida Governor Ron DeSantis of ongoing constitutional mutiny in a new court filing on Monday, marking yet another development in the back-and-forth saga between the media giant and the Republican presidential candidate. Governor DeSantis and his allies are engaged in an ongoing constitutional mutiny, Disney wrote in its latest filing in the company's federal case against DeSantis, which it launched earlier this year. They openly reject the foundational First Amendment rule that a state cannot deploy its official powers to punish the expression of disfavored political viewpoints. According to Reuters, O'Day Asset Management, one of Britain's best-known hedge funds, will shut, it said on Tuesday in a statement on its website, less than six months after its founder faced fresh allegations of misconduct. Crispin O'Day, 64, was ousted in June from O'Day Asset Management, which he founded in 1991, after the Financial Times and Tortoise Media reported that 13 women had alleged that he had sexually assaulted or harassed them. O'Day has denied the allegations. According to Yahoo Finance, Toyota is now doubling down on building out its battery capacity in the U.S. On Tuesday, the automaker announced it will be expanding its investment at its North Carolina battery manufacturing plant by nearly $8 billion an investment that will also add approximately 3,000 new jobs. 
Toyota says this new investment brings its total outlay to the upcoming facility to $13.9 billion, with 5,000 jobs created in total. The Liberty-based plant will make batteries for Toyota's EVs and PHEVs. Toyota says eight additional production lines will now be added to the two previously announced lines, with the ability to create 30 gigawatt-hours annually by 2030. According to Reuters, Europe's top space officials said on Tuesday there was light at the end of tunnel, in efforts to bring the delayed Ariane 6 to the launch pad and restore Europe's independent access to space. Europe's new heavyweight launch vehicle has been delayed by technical glitches, leaving the continent relying on Elon Musk's SpaceX for some launches until sometime in 2024. According to Reuters, global macro hedge funds are now bearish on equities, leaving behind bullish bets which were part of their strategy for most of the year, while commodity trend advisors increased their short positions, Barclays said in a note. A short equity bet implies that portfolio managers believe stock prices will fall. According to Yahoo Finance, oil could surge up to a record $157 per barrel if the Middle East conflict broadens and creates a large disruption in the markets, the World Bank has warned. The grim forecast is part of the institution's commodity markets outlook, where it lays out three risk scenarios amid the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas and the continuing conflict in Ukraine. According to Reuters, FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried was grilled on Tuesday about what a U.S. prosecutor called his cozy relationship with officials in the Bahamas, where the cryptocurrency exchange was based before its November 2022 collapse. During Bankman Fried's second day of cross examination at his fraud trial, prosecutor Danielle Sassoon sought to link favors that he did for Bahamian officials with his decision to let FTX customers there withdraw their funds after withdrawals for others had been halted around November 9, 2022. According to Yahoo Finance, artificial intelligence has been considered to be the most exciting development in tech since the Internet. But it comes at a huge cost in terms of higher energy consumption. That's why one engineer is working on ways to use the ocean's renewable energy to eventually store and compute data underwater. According to Reuters, Italy's economy stagnated in the third quarter from the previous three months. Preliminary data showed on Tuesday, a weaker reading than expected following a 0.4% contraction in the second quarter. On a year-on-year -year basis, Gross domestic product in the Eurozone's third largest economy was also flat, National Statistics Bureau ISTAT reported. According to Bloomberg, O'Day Asset Management is closing down, months after its founder Crispin O'Day faced fresh allegations of sexual misconduct. The firm said on its website Tuesday that the entire business, including Brook Asset Management and O'Day Wealth, will be closing. Its funds will either shutter or move to other companies. According to Reuters, a Pennsylvania jury has ordered Mitsubishi Motors to pay nearly $977 million in damages to a man who said he became a quadriplegic in a vehicle rollover because of an alleged defective seatbelt. Jurors in the Philadelphia Court of Common Pleas on Monday awarded Francis Amagasu, 58, and his wife $176,551,384 in compensatory damages and $800 million in punitive damages, according to Kyle Farrar one of the plaintiff's lawyers. According to Reuters, cruise operator Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings is making changes to its 2024 itineraries, cancelling stops in Israel due to the ongoing Israel-Hamas war, according to an email sent to travel agents seen by Reuters. The cruises will instead make port stops in cities like Trieste, Italy instead of Israel, according to the email sent by Oceania Cruises, which is owned by Norwegian. According to Bloomberg, Qualcomm Inc., stepping up its long-running effort to break into the personal computer market, unveiled a new laptop processor designed to outperform rival products from Intel Corp. and Apple Inc. The new Snapdragon X features 12 high-performance cores capable of crunching data at 3.8 GHz, Qualcomm said at a company event Tuesday in Hawaii. The chip is as much as twice as fast as a similar 12-core processor from Intel while using 68% less power, Qualcomm claims. According to Reuters, energy pipeline operator Enterprise Products Partners will expand its natural gas liquids operations, adding a pipeline from Texas's Permian Basin, new plants to process natural gas, 
and converting an oil pipeline in Texas to NGLs, officials said on Tuesday. The energy infrastructure provider has sharpened its focus on NGLs that are used to make plastics and gasoline on rising global demand and a boom in U.S. exports. According to Reuters, shares of NVIDIA Corp dropped by nearly 5% to a nearly five-month low on Tuesday following a report that the artificial intelligence giant may be forced to cancel up to $5 billion worth of advanced chip orders to China in compliance with new U.S. government restrictions. NVIDIA was notified last week that AI chip orders scheduled for delivery next year to major Chinese technology companies, including Alibaba Group, TikTok owner ByteDance and Baidu, are subject to the latest export restrictions announced by the U.S. Commerce Department, according to a Wall Street Journal report citing people familiar with the matter. According to Reuters, the Dutch consumer watchdog is challenging the fees that Apple charges dating app providers in the Netherlands as part of its long-running case against the U.S. technology company over the dominance of its app store, according to a filing seen by Reuters. Bloomberg News reported on the filing earlier on Tuesday. According to Reuters, Morgan Stanley may pay between $500 million and $1 billion to resolve a long-running U.S. probe into how it handled private stock sales. Semaphore reported on Tuesday, citing people familiar with the matter. A possible settlement with the Justice Department and the Securities and Exchange Commission could also see the bank tightening its internal controls, the report said. According to Reuters, U.S. field production of crude oil rose to a new monthly record in August at 13.05 million barrels per day, the Energy Information Administration said on Tuesday. Output rose 0.7% in August from the month prior, the data showed. The previous monthly high was in November 2019, when production reached 13.0 million barrels of oil per day. According to Reuters, Wall Street's main indexes struggled for direction on Tuesday as investors awaited the outcome of the Federal Reserve's monetary policy meeting while assessing the latest batch of earnings reports. According to Yahoo Finance, U.S. stocks are on pace to log a third straight losing month, which hasn't happened to the benchmark SP500 since the onset of the COVID pandemic in March 2020. The SP500 officially entered correction territory on Friday, marking a 10% downturn from recent highs nearly exactly three months ago. According to Reuters, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said on Tuesday that Russia would be successful in Ukraine unless the United States kept up its support for Kyiv. Austin and Secretary of State Antony Blinken testified to the Senate Appropriations Committee on President Joe Biden's request for $106 billion to fund ambitious plans for Ukraine, Israel and U.S. border security. According to Bloomberg, private real estate fundraising plunged in the third quarter as higher interest rates cooled investor appetites for risk. Around the world, $18.2 billion was raised by 61 funds in the three months through September a 71% decline from the second quarter, when 117 funds raised $63.4 billion, according to a report by Prekin. It was the slowest rate of fund closures in the present cycle of interest rate increases, the research firm said. According to Bloomberg, the Ontario Securities Commission issued a temporary order prohibiting a Toronto-based hedge from trading after dealers executing transactions for the fund incurred losses and the fund's manager passed away. The regulator is investigating the financial condition of Trainer Ridge Capital Inc. and the circumstances of a series of failed trades, it said in an October 30 filing. Three brokerage firms were left with losses ranging from C$85 million to C$95 million, $61.3 million to $68.5 million, after completing trades for Trainer during the week of October 23. According to Reuters, Fossil fuel companies must face up to their responsibilities to cut the CO2 emissions fueling climate change, the U.S. climate envoy John Kerry said on Tuesday, as countries prepare to debate the future of fossil fuels at this year's UNCOP28 climate summit. The oil and gas industry is expected to be in focus at the COP28 summit from November 30 to December 12 in the United Arab Emirates, a major oil producer. Dozens of countries plan to push for the world's first deal to phase out CO2 emitting coal, oil and gas. According to Bloomberg, Cytokinetics Inc., a late-stage biotech firm developing cardiovascular treatments, is exploring options after receiving takeover interest, people with knowledge of the matter said.
The South San Francisco-based company has attracted interest from at least one major drug maker in recent months, the people said, asking not to be identified because the information is private. It's now evaluating its next steps, according to the people. According to Bloomberg, an image of a bloodied corpse. A photo of a crying baby edited to look as if it were lying in rubble. Shots of what at first appears to be an entire neighborhood leveled in Gaza. There's little doubt that deep fakes, images and videos digitally altered and spread spread to form false narratives, have been deployed by both sides in the war between Israel and Hamas. How profoundly they've worked to convince the masses on social media, shape public opinion, influence decisions and proliferate, as many feared, with the use of generative artificial intelligence tools remains less clear. According to Reuters, FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried concluded his defense in his fraud trial on Tuesday, saying he felt regret for not looking into the $8 billion his hedge fund borrowed from the cryptocurrency exchange before it collapsed last November. According to Reuters, Tesla on Tuesday won the first U.S. trial over allegations that its autopilot driver assistant feature led to a death, as a jury found there was not a manufacturing defect in the system. The case, in a California state court, was filed by two passengers in a 2019 crash who accused the company of knowing autopilot was defective when it sold the car. Tesla argued human error caused the crash. According to Reuters, Investors should be prepared for long-duration treasury yields to reach 7% if the U.S. economy skirts a widely anticipated recession, Ned Davis Research warned in a note on Tuesday. Benchmark 10-year treasury yields, which move inversely to prices, are hovering near 16-year highs of 5% as investors price in rising U.S. federal deficits and the Federal Reserve's guidance that it will keep rates high until it is convinced that inflation is under control. The sell-off in treasuries has weighed on stock market valuations and increased borrowing costs for companies and consumers alike. According to Bloomberg, the European Central Bank will need to keep borrowing costs high for some time, according to Bundesbank President Joachim Nagel. Our tight monetary policy is working, but we mustn't let up too soon, the German Central Bank chief said Tuesday in a speech in Berlin. Rather, the key interest rates will have to remain at a sufficiently high level for a sufficiently long time. According to Reuters, prices for orange juice rose on Tuesday to the highest since future contracts started trading in New York in 1966 as an outlook for limited production in the United States, Brazil and Mexico boosted investors' interest in the product. The January contract of frozen concentrated orange juice on the Intercontinental Exchange hit an all-time high of $4.17 per pound during the session, before falling back to $3.83 per pound. According to Yahoo Finance, the government ended its cross-examination of Sam Bankman Fried Tuesday, concluding a contentious clash in the trial's final days as the FTX co-founder tried to convince a jury he didn't steal billions of customer funds from his own cryptocurrency exchange. The 31-year-old faces decades in prison on seven criminal fraud charges. Prosecutors say he lied to customers about how their funds on deposit with the exchange would be used and shifted billions to his cryptocurrency trading firm Alameda Research so the money could be spent on investments, political donations and real estate. According to Bloomberg, First Quantum Minerals Limited plunged by another 15% as uncertainty deepens over the future of the company's Panama copper mine, which is set to face a referendum that would also have sweeping implications for the country's economy and global copper supply. The latest drop brings the company's losses this week to 39%, as investors assess the outlook for First Quantum's most important asset. Cobra Panama one of the world's biggest and newest copper mines, has generated the bulk of the company's revenue since it opened in 2019. The operation is projected to account for almost half of the company's operating revenue next year if it stays fully operational. According to Bloomberg, Advanced Micro Devices Inc. has shown that it can finally challenge Intel Corp. Now it's taking a run at the new king of the chip industry. When AMD reports earnings Tuesday afternoon, Investor focus will be on its new artificial intelligence accelerator chip, seen as the firm's best hope of competing with NVIDIA Corpy's H100, which helped turn that company into the first trillion-dollar semiconductor maker. According to Reuters, 
European energy companies, including Denmark's Orsted, will likely write down more of their U.S. offshore wind investments this week after BP and Equinor booked $840 million in impairments in recent days. Orsted, the world's largest offshore wind developer, said in August it may see impairments of 16 billion Danish crowns on its U.S. offshore developments due to supply chain problems, soaring interest rates and a lack of new tax credits. According to Reuters, weaker electric vehicle demand, increased competition from China and market volatility are complicating French carmaker Renault's plans to list its EV business Ampere, four people familiar with the matter told Reuters. Renault aims to extract more value from Ampere through an initial public offering but is unlikely to go ahead if the final valuation falls below 7 billion euros, two of the sources said. One of them said that the cutoff point could be closer to 6 billion euros. According to Bloomberg, China said it will set up a system to resolve debt risks of its local governments, as state leaders and top bankers wrapped up a two-day, closed-door meeting to set the priorities for the $61 trillion financial sector. After the twice-a-decade meeting chaired by President Xi Jinping, China's Central Television reported on its nightly news broadcast that oversight of the financial sector would be boosted further to resolve risks and to promote high-quality developments. The Central Financial Work Conference was held on October 30-31 in Beijing. According to Reuters, Hamas has told mediators it will release a number of foreign captives in the coming days, Abu Ubaidah, the spokesman of the group's armed wing, Al-Qassam Brigades, said in a video on its Telegram account on Tuesday. The brigade's spokesman did not give more details on the number of captives or their nationalities. According to Bloomberg, Zillow Group Inc. and other real estate stocks plunged after a Missouri jury found the National Association of Realtors and other industry players guilty of colluding to maintain high brokerage commissions. Shares of Zillow were down 6% to $35.87 at 2.26 p.m. New York time. They earlier fell as much as 11%, the largest intraday decline since May 2022, after industry publications reported on the ruling. Brokerage shares also sank, with Compass Inc. falling 6.6%. Redfin Corp. dropped 7.3%. According to Bloomberg, Colombia held interest rates at a 24-year high as policymakers fret that inflation is taking too long to slow to their target. The central bank left its benchmark rate at 13.25%, Governor Leonardo Villar told reporters on Tuesday. The decision was in line with expectations. According to Bloomberg, billionaire investor Stan Druckenmiller said he's bought massive, bullish positions in two-year notes, as he's become more worried about the economy. In recent weeks, I started to get really nervous, Druckenmiller, founder of Duquesne Family Office, said in an interview with hedge fund manager Paul Tudor Jones at a conference last week. So I bought massive leveraged positions in the short-term notes, he said. According to Yahoo Finance, the education department delivered its largest enforcement fine ever, charging Grand Canyon University $37.7 million for deceptive practices. Federal student aid, part of the education department, found that GCU lied to students about the cost to attend doctorate programs, which was consistently lower than 98% of students who paid for a doctorate. The university disbursed the most federal student aid of all participating institutions for the past four award years. According to Reuters, a U.S. jury in Missouri on Tuesday said the National Association of Realtors and several real estate companies together owe more than $1.7 billion in class action damages, finding they conspired to artificially drive up the commission that home sellers pay to buyers' brokers. The verdict followed a two-week trial in federal court in Kansas City, where the case had drawn widespread attention for challenging widely used real estate industry practices. According to Yahoo Finance, this holiday, Walmart is looking to deliver toys and coals in one day, but it'll be AI pulling the sleigh. America's largest employer and retailer has been inching towards modernization of its inventory and delivery system, and this winter will be the first test of its next-generation supply chain, the company announced Tuesday. The system is patent-pending and uses real-time data to help the company ensure maximum efficiency across all stores and regions. According to Reuters, Teams for U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping have an agreement in principle for them to meet in San Francisco in November but important details need to be hammered out, 
a senior Biden administration official said on Tuesday. According to Bloomberg, the People's Bank of China will likely inject ample liquidity into the money market after interest rates surged on Tuesday, according to a person close to the central bank, as state media blamed financial institutions for disturbing the market. Money market rates will likely retreat toward the rates used in the central bank's open market operations from Wednesday, said the person, who asked not to be identified. Liquidity in the banking system is relatively abundant, the person added. According to Reuters, Canadian Finance Minister Christia Freeland said on Tuesday she was cautiously optimistic about settling a dispute with the United States about Ottawa's planned digital services tax on large technology companies. The digital services plan aims to address the challenge of taxing digital giants like Alphabet and Amazon.com that can book their profits in low-tax countries. According to Reuters, healthcare software company Waystar, which was set to launch its initial public offering roadshow to pitch investors this week, has now delayed it until December at the earliest, the Wall Street Journal reported on Tuesday. The company will likely wait till 2024, the journal's report added, citing people familiar with the matter. According to Reuters, a group representing major automakers on Tuesday said the industry opposes steelmaker Cleveland Cliff's proposed acquisition of U.S. steel, saying it would increase auto industry costs and slow electric vehicle sales. The Alliance for Automotive Innovation, representing General Motors, Toyota Motor, Volkswagen, Hyundai and other major automakers, in a letter to Congress and U.S. regulators cited the combined steel company's dominant market share for steel used to produce vehicle structural frames, for automotive surface panels like doors, hoods and fenders, as well as steel used for electric vehicle motors. According to Reuters, chip designer Advanced Micro Devices forecast fourth quarter revenue below Wall Street estimates on Tuesday hurt by a weak gaming market as well as a decline in demand from some industries for its programmable chips. Shares of the Santa Clara, California-based company fell 3% in trading after the bell. According to Reuters, U.S. senators from both parties expressed doubts on Tuesday about House of Representatives Republicans' plan to provide $14.3 billion in aid to Israel by cutting funding for the Internal Revenue Service, without providing aid to Ukraine. In the first major legislative action under new Speaker Mike Johnson, House Republicans unveiled a standalone supplemental spending bill only for Israel on Monday, despite President Joe Biden's request for a $106 billion package that would include aid for Israel and Ukraine and funding to boost competition with China in the Indo-Pacific as well as security along the U.S. border with Mexico. According to Reuters, Investment firm Anatole Investment Management called on Star Surgical Company to consider spinning off its Asia or China business, arguing the standalone China business could be worth as much as $5 billion, according to its letter to the company. Hong Kong-based Anatole, which owns roughly 4.2% of the Monrovia, California-headquartered company's shares, said Star is undervalued and not reaching its huge growth potential. According to Reuters, Flexible workspace provider WeWork plans to file for bankruptcy as early as next week, the Wall Street Journal reported on Tuesday, citing people familiar with the matter. Shares of the company fell 30% in extended trading after the news. According to Reuters, billionaire investor Stanley Druckenmiller said he has bought two-year U.S. Treasury bonds in recent weeks because of rising concerns about the health of the U.S. economy. About two to three weeks ago I started to get really nervous. So I bought a massive leveraged position in two years, the founder of the Duquesne family office said at an investor conference last week. A video of the panel was posted on YouTube this week. According to Reuters, Tesla is aiming to make 200,000 units of its electric pickup truck, Cybertruck, per year, chief executive officer Elon Musk said on Tuesday. The company had earlier said that Tesla had the capacity to make more than 125,000 Cybertrucks annually with Musk adding there was potential to lift it to 250,000 in 2025. According to Reuters, steelmaker Turnium reported on Tuesday a third-quarter net income of $271 million, up more than 77% from the $153 million net income reported during the same period last year. Revenue rose by about a quarter to total $5.2 billion during the July to September period. According to Reuters, packaging company Amcor PLC on Tuesday reported a drop in first-quarter revenue and profit, 
hit by softer demand for its containers and cartons as consumer goods companies look to trim inventories in a choppy macroeconomic environment. The Zurich headquartered company, which provides to consumer packaged goods companies like Cadbury maker Mandela's International, took a hit from lower volumes in categories such as healthcare, meat and liquid beverages in North America, as well as snacks and coffee in Europe. According to Reuters, Canada's main stock edged higher on Tuesday but was down for the month of October, as oil prices fell and domestic data added to evidence of a weaker economy. The Toronto Stock Exchange's SP-TSX Composite Index ended up 16.71 points, or 0.1%, at 18,873.47. For the month it lost 3.4%, its third straight month of declines. According to Reuters, New England will require large amounts of clean energy alongside some traditional power resources and robust transmission to maintain reliable supply of electricity while making the energy transition, a study by the U.S. region's grid operator found. The transition from planet-warming fossil fuels to renewable sources of energy, promises far-reaching changes to the power grid, said Robert Ethier, vice president of system planning for ISO New England. According to Reuters, Equity Residential on Tuesday removed the upper end of its full-year revenue growth forecast as rental markets in San Francisco and Seattle underperformed, offsetting growth in East Coast markets such as New York and Boston. Shares of the Real Estate Investment Trust fell about 4.5% in trading after the bell. According to Reuters, telecommunication services firm Lumen Technologies beat Wall Street estimates for third-quarter revenue on Tuesday, helped by strong demand for its services as businesses digitize their operations. Lumen has a network of fiber optic and copper cables and provides cloud-based communication services and IT solutions to businesses and users, helping them managing calls, messages and video meetings on a single interface. According to Reuters, the United States Government Accountability Office, a congressional agency overlooking the use of U.S. taxpayer money, said on Tuesday it recommended actions to the government to improve the way the country imports sugar. Gao said in a report where it analyzed the U.S. sugar program that the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the U.S. Trade Representative need to evaluate the way sugar import quotas at low tariffs are allocated to countries. According to Reuters, Insurer Assurant reported a surge in third-quarter adjusted profit on Tuesday, helped by the strong performance of its global housing unit and higher investment returns, sending shares up 2.7% in aftermarket trading. Assurance Global Housing Business, which offers lender-placed insurance, multifamily housing and mortgage services, posted adjusted EBITDA of $165.1 million in the quarter, compared with a loss of $38.5 million a year earlier. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in Asian markets from Jamie McGeever, financial markets columnist. It promises to be another dramatic day in Asia on Wednesday, as investors digest the huge moves in Japan's government bond and currency markets and brace for a raft of potentially market-moving economic indicators from across the continent. According to Reuters, Carrefour Brazil reported a nearly 60% year-on-year decline in net profit for the third quarter hit mainly by lower sales in its retail unit, the company said on Tuesday. The Brazilian arm of French retailer Carrefour said that its profit reached 132 million reais in the three-month period. According to Reuters, Royal Bank of Canada has injected about $2.95 billion into its U.S. unit City National Bank so far this year to bolster its capital, making one of the biggest annual infusions of funds since acquiring the Los Angeles-based bank in 2015. City National disclosed the numbers in a regulatory report in the United States late on Monday, which also showed that it posted a net loss attributable to the bank of $1.59 billion for the first three quarters of the year. According to Yahoo Finance, when the Federal Reserve announces its latest policy decision on Wednesday, Wall Street expects the central bank will hold rates steady while retaining the option to further raise rates if needed. Fed Chair Jerome Powell wants to play it right down the middle, said Wilmer Stith, bond portfolio manager for Wilmington Trust. They're well into their tightening cycle, if not done already. According to Reuters, U.S. solar panel maker First Solar on Tuesday reported a third-quarter profit compared to a year-ago loss on steady demand for renewable energy and raised the lower end of its full-year profit forecast.
shares of the company rose 3.6% in aftermarket trade. According to Bloomberg, Advanced Micro Devices Inc., Intel Corp.'s main rival in computer processors, gave a lackluster revenue forecast for the current period, warning that demand for gaming machines is slowing. Fourth quarter revenue will be $5.8 billion to $6.4 billion, AMD said in a statement Tuesday. That compares with an average analyst estimate of $6.4 billion. According to Reuters, Alphabet's Google has settled claims by dating app developer Match Group that it monopolized Android app distribution with its Play Store, leaving Fortnite, maker Epic Games as the sole plaintiff in an antitrust trial against Google set to begin November 6. Match said in a filing in San Francisco federal court on Tuesday that it had resolved its allegations against Google. According to Reuters, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will visit Israel on Friday for meetings with members of the government there and then make other stops in the region, the State Department said on Tuesday amid the Israel-Hamas conflict. Palestinian health officials said earlier that at least 50 Palestinians were killed when Israeli airstrikes hit a refugee camp in northern Gaza on Tuesday, as Israeli ground forces battled Hamas gunmen based in a sprawling tunnel network. According to Reuters, Steelmaker Turnium reported on Tuesday a third-quarter adjusted net income of $271 million, up more than 77% from the $153 million net income posted during the same period last year. In a statement, the company said steel shipments during this year's third quarter shot up nearly 40% to total 4.1 million metric tons. According to Reuters, a panel of advisors to the U.S. health regulator said on Tuesday Vertex Pharmaceuticals and CRISPR Therapeutics could assess potential safety risks of their sickle cell disease gene therapy after approval. If the therapy is approved, Vertex has proposed a 15-year follow-up of patients to evaluate the safety outcomes of the therapy. According to Reuters, National Australia Bank Limited said on Wednesday it has set a new target to more than double its lending to indigenous businesses and communities to at least $1 billion Australian dollars over the next three years. The move comes at a time when banks have borne the brunt of increased regulatory scrutiny in a push for better banking outcomes for indigenous consumers, including access to better finances and quality of life. According to Bloomberg, Argentina paid the International Monetary Fund $2.6 billion due Tuesday, complying with major maturities before the presidential runoff election November 19, according to two people with direct knowledge of the matter. The government, led by presidential candidate and economy minister Sergio Massa, paid the IMF as the central bank reported reserves fell Tuesday to $21.9 billion, the lowest level since 2006. With the payment, Argentina avoids falling into arrears a worst-case scenario, on its $43 billion IMF program, the lender's largest. According to Bloomberg, the yen dropped to its lowest level this year after the Bank of Japan disappointed investors with only minor tweaks to its policy settings. Stocks in Asia look set for a mixed open after gains on Wall Street weren't enough to offset a third monthly slide in the SP500. Futures for equity benchmarks in Japan and Australia rose, while those for Hong Kong slipped. The SP500 rebounded in the final day of October but still notched its worst monthly run since the onset of the pandemic. Treasury 10-year yields rose, with traders taking the latest economic data in stride on the eve of a Federal Reserve decision. The dollar halted a two-day drop as the Japanese currency weakened. According to Bloomberg, Australian inflation is being driven by climate change, geopolitical shocks and government policies, factors typically beyond the Reserve Bank's control. Yet economists still anticipate it will have to respond with monetary tightening as soon as next week. In a sign that pressures in at least one of these sectors are here to stay, figures released Wednesday showed Australian home prices advanced for an eighth straight month in October while rental vacancies hit a fresh record low. According to Bloomberg, the Federal Reserve is poised to hold interest rates steady at a 22-year high for a second meeting while leaving open the possibility of another hike as soon as December with economic growth staying resilient. The Federal Open Market Committee will keep rates unchanged at its two-day meeting ending Wednesday in a range of 5.25% to 5.5%, a level first reached in July. The rate decision in an accompanying statement will be released at 2 p.m. in Washington. 
Chair Jerome Powell will hold a press conference 30 minutes later. According to Bloomberg, Chinese stocks saw another month of foreign capital exodus as overseas funds offloaded 44.8 billion yuan worth of mainland shares in October. The month saw only three days of inflows even as authorities ramped up support, with the sovereign fund buying banking stocks and exchange-traded funds. The three-month selling streak, a record, amounts to 172 billion yuan and threatens to turn this year's flow into negative territory. If that happens, it would be the first time China saw an annual outflow since the second mainland Hong Kong trading link opened in late 2016. According to Bloomberg, Alphabet Inc. settled claims that Google Play policies are unlawful, resolving an antitrust complaint brought by Match Group Inc. that endangered billions of dollars in revenue generated by its app marketplace. The deal was disclosed in a court filing Tuesday, but terms and financial details were kept under wraps. Lawyers representing Match and Google told U.S. District Judge James Donato that they've agreed to drop all claims and counterclaims against each other. According to Bloomberg, Australia needs to tighten monetary policy further as part of stepped-up efforts to rein in inflation that include governments slowing the pace of public investment, the International Monetary Fund said in a staff report. While inflation has come off a peak, it remains well above the central bank's 2-3% target and broader economic growth is still proving resilient in the face of 4 percentage points of hikes since May 2022, the fund said Wednesday in the concluding statement of an Article 4 mission. According to Bloomberg, traders are piling into fresh bets against the yen, showing a willingness to test how much further Japanese authorities will allow it to fall before intervening again in the currency market. The yen staged its biggest one-day drop since April on Tuesday, sending it to a new year to date low. The slide came after the Bank of Japan's underwhelming tweak to its cap on bond yields suggested any move away from ultra-loose monetary policy would be slow and gradual. According to Reuters, Japan's top currency diplomat Masato Kanda said on Wednesday authorities were on standby to respond to recent, one-sided, sharp, moves in the yen escalating his warning to investors against pushing down the currency too much. Speculative trading seems to be the biggest factor behind recent currency moves, Kanda, vice finance minister for international affairs, told reporters on the yen's declines. According to Reuters, a California jury found Bear liable in a case brought by a man who claimed his cancer was due to exposure to the company's Roundup weed killer and ordered it to pay $332 million in damages, Law.com reported on Tuesday. The verdict includes $325 million in punitive damages and $7 million in compensatory damages awarded to plaintiff Mike Dennis, who was diagnosed at age 51 with a form of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, the report said. According to Reuters, Israeli airstrikes hit a densely populated refugee camp in the Gaza Strip, killing at least 50 Palestinians and a Hamas commander, and medics struggled to treat the casualties, even setting up operating rooms in hospital corridors. Israeli tanks have been active in Gaza for at least four days following weeks of air bombardments in retaliation for an attack by Palestinian Hamas militants on mostly Israeli civilians on October 7 and the taking of more than 200 hostages. According to Reuters, Britain will convene governments, academia and companies working at the cutting edge of artificial intelligence on Wednesday at the inaugural AI Safety Summit to debate how, and even if, the risks of the technology can be contained. The meeting is the brainchild of Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, who wants to carve out a role for Britain as an intermediary between the economic blocs of the United States, China and the European Union. According to Bloomberg, Two Sigma Investments, the $60 billion quant giant, plans to spin out its private equity impact investing unit amid internal discontent. Two Sigma Impact's inaugural fund raised $677 million, short of its $750 million target, according to people familiar with the matter. That occurred during a challenging environment as investors who allocate to funds struggled with liquidity. Still, some employees were disappointed about the extent of external fundraising support they received from the parent company, a person familiar with the thinking within the unit said. According to Reuters, the staff of the International Monetary Fund on Wednesday recommended Australia's central bank further tighten monetary policy in order to bring inflation back to target and keep inflation expectations anchored, after an annual consultation. In a report that is yet to be presented to the IMF Executive Board, 
The staff said the slowdown in inflation in Australia is slow and core inflation remains sticky. According to Reuters, Japan's factory activity contracted for a fifth straight month in October, a survey showed on Wednesday, as subdued demand and inflationary pressures squeezed businesses. The final Ojibun Bank Japan Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index stood at 48.7 in October, slightly improved from 48.5 in September, but still below the 50.0 point threshold that separates growth from contraction. According to Bloomberg, oil edged higher after plunging more than 5% in the first two days of the week as a still-contained Israel-Hamas war caused attention to shift to a shaky global demand backdrop. West Texas Intermediate traded above $81 a barrel, below where it was prior to the Hamas attack on October 7, while global benchmark Brent closed near $85 on Tuesday. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will head back to Israel on Friday and also make other stops in the region as part of diplomatic efforts that have so far helped stop the conflict from spreading across the Middle East. According to Reuters, the yen wobbled near 15-year lows on the euro and a one-year trough on the dollar on Wednesday, having slid on bets that a tweak of Japan's yield control policy isn't enough to close wide interest rate gaps that have pressured the currency for years. Moves in early Asia trade were modest ahead of a U.S. Federal Reserve meeting later in the day, where rates are seen on hold, and the release of U.S. Treasury refunding details. According to Reuters, oil prices edged up in early Asian trade on Wednesday ahead of key global central bank meetings this week including the U.S. Federal Reserve, as the market also closely watches the latest developments in the Israel-Hamas conflict. Brent January crude futures rose 36 cents, or 0.4 percent, to $85.38 a barrel by 0040 G M T after falling $1.33 on Tuesday. Brent December futures settled 4 cents lower at $87.41 a barrel at the contract's expiry on Tuesday. According to Reuters, China's Annus Horribilis has seen its stock markets fall funds run up losses and foreign investors run for the exit. But areas of the market dominated by small stocks and frequented by the country's retail investors have done surprisingly well. Scores of retail investors are dabbling in microcap stocks, stocks whose market capitalization is tiny, operating under the radar of big funds and investors in their massive market moving flows. According to Bloomberg, South Korea's exports rose for the first time since late last year in a positive sign for the nation's growth outlook and an indication that global demand is regaining strength. Exports increased 5.1% from a year earlier in October, according to data released Wednesday on the Customs Office website. Imports fell 9.7%. According to Bloomberg, China's central bank withdrew cash from the financial system suggesting it sees Tuesday's abrupt surge in short-term borrowing costs as a temporary disruption. The People's Bank of China drained 109 billion yuan on a net basis from the money market Wednesday via offering seven-day reverse repurchase agreements, a short-term loan. According to Bloomberg, macro trades have bounced back to become the best-performing hedge fund strategy in the third quarter, turning a page on a dismal first half that saw economic uncertainty weigh on managers. Asset-weighted returns for macro funds hit 3.07% in the three months through September, according to data from fund administrator Citco, which sees over $1 trillion of global hedge fund asset flows. According to Bloomberg, A.M. Green, a hydrogen and ammonia producer owned by the founders of Indian renewable company Greenco Energy Holdings, is planning to raise around $1 billion to fund its growing business, according to people familiar with the matter. The firm is working with an advisor on the fundraising to bolster its ability to produce green hydrogen and other chemical compounds, the people said, asking not to be identified as the information is private. AM Green aims to build a million tons a year of green methanol capacity, one of the people said. According to Bloomberg, manufacturing activity in Asia slumped again in October as conflict in the Middle East drove oil prices higher, costs rose and global demand remained under pressure. Most countries across the region reported pressures from cost inflation, shrinking output and new orders, according to Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Indexes published Wednesday by SP Global and Ojibun Bank. Japan and South Korea remained in contraction at 48.7 and 49.8, respectively, little changed from the prior month.
According to Bloomberg, China's manufacturing activity contracted in October, according to a private survey, signaling that the economic recovery is losing momentum and pressuring policymakers who are trying to shore up growth. The Kaixin Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index fell to 49.5 from 50.6 in September, missing economists' forecast of 50.8. The 50 line separates expansion from contraction. According to Reuters, Indian government bond yields are likely to trade largely unchanged in early trades on Wednesday, as the market awaits the U.S. Federal Reserve's monetary policy decision later in the day. The 10-year benchmark bond yield is expected to be in the 7.34% minus 7.38% range, after ending at 7.3558% in the previous session, a trader with a private bank said. According to Bloomberg, cooking oil traders are meticulously sifting through weather maps and production data for Indonesia in a quest for clues on how severely El Nino will dry out palm oil plantations in the world's top supplier. Oils extracted from the palms of Indonesia are used in everything from candy bars to soap, lipstick and fuel, and stable supplies of the most used edible oil are essential for keeping global food inflation under control. The arrival of the El Nino weather phenomenon traditionally parches the farmlands of Southeast Asia, reducing output of the tropical oil. According to Bloomberg, China has loosened the rules governing its carbon market after prices rose to a record to make it easier for power generators to meet rising winter demand. Coal-fired power plants, which are due to buy carbon permits to meet emissions targets by the end of the year, were informed by the Environment Ministry that they'll be allowed to borrow more from future allowances, according to people familiar with the matter. The plan will swell supply and help eliminate the threat of electricity shortages during the colder weather, said the people, who requested anonymity when discussing a private notice from the ministry. According to Reuters, Asian stocks inched lower on Wednesday ahead of a keenly awaited policy decision from the Federal Reserve later in the day, while the yen was stuck near one-year lows against the dollar, keeping markets on edge for possible intervention by Tokyo. Mischi's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan was 0.13% lower, starting November in a somber mood after clocking three straight months of losses. Japan's Nikkei was 2% higher. According to Reuters, Japan's government is considering spending over 17 trillion yen in a package of measures to cushion the economic blow from rising inflation, a draft of the package obtained by Reuters showed on Wednesday. According to Reuters, chances of an imminent hike in Australian interest rates grew on Wednesday after data showed house prices rebounding to near record highs and the International Monetary Fund recommended tightening monetary and fiscal policy screws to curb inflation. Markets responded by pricing in a near 70% chance that the Reserve Bank of Australia will raise rates by a quarter point to 4.35% when it meets on November 7, ending four months of keeping rates on hold. According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average traded sharply higher on Wednesday as investors scooped up stocks after the Bank of Japan adopted a dovish monetary policy stance a day earlier. The Nikkei was up 2% to 31,475.62 by the midday break, while the broader topics advanced 2.15% to 2,391.13. According to Reuters, Asia's manufacturers faced worsening pressure in October with factory activity in China slipping back into decline, clouding recovery prospects for the region's major exporters already squeezed by weaker global demand and higher prices. Purchasing managers' indexes for factory powerhouses China, Japan and South Korea showed activity shrinking while Vietnam and Malaysia also struggled with the broadening fallout from a Chinese slowdown. According to Reuters, Southeast Asia's internet economy is expected to grow 11% year-on-year in 2023, slowing from last year's 20% growth, an industry report showed on Wednesday. The annual report published jointly by Alphabet's Google, Singapore state investor Temasek Holdings and global business consultants Bain Company also said the region's internet economy is seen worth $295 billion by 2025, down from a previous estimate of $330 billion. According to Bloomberg, Southeast Asia's internet economy will log its slowest growth on record this year, a group of researchers said, as they slashed near-term e-commerce spending estimates for the region by 13%. Total online spending will rise about 11% this year to $218 billion in the region, research from Google, 
Temasek Holdings Private and Bain Company showed, slowing from 20% a year earlier and reaching its lowest rate since at least 2017. The biggest category, e-commerce, is set to reach only $186 billion in 2025, rather than the $211 billion the researchers estimated previously.